coming up this week on the center of it all. Thousands of people flooded the Pennsylvania Great Outdoors Visitors Bureau. We tell you why. And if your joints can't handle a lot of pounding or stress, we have the perfect workout for you. Mel gets us ready for football season with a little tailgate recipe, and our pet needs your help in finding a new home. Don't go anywhere. It's all coming up next right here on the center of it all. Good morning, welcome to the center of it all. One town will have some massive cleanup to do after a weekend expo brought in thousands of people who all love one thing, elk. Benazet was flooded with hundreds of vendors from food to art to jewelry over a two day period. But the biggest draw was for the elk hunting licenses where over 30,000 people applied and only 118 were chosen. Many of the people and vendors were reoccurring saying this is just the place to be. Huge event, I couldn't miss out on this event. I didn't make it the first year and I had heard really great things about it. And so I thought I'm gonna try it out. Keep the animal population in control. So we're just trying to like I say, promote it to let people know we got to be out there. There's a lot of antis out there that don't think you need to take care of the rabbits and the raccoons and skunks and all that. But if you don't do it, disease will kill them, and that's worse death for them than trapping. So, no, just the crowd and that. You know, you got thousands of people walking through here, and you're trying to get you know get out to the people, and it's a good spot to reach them. I'm a painter, and I paint right on real antique windows. Like these are actually from houses. Um, and it's right on the on the glass. And I also do like little picture frames because I know um, some people don't have the space for for bigger ones. Yeah. Um, I actually started doing small like wine glasses, and then I kind of moved to vases. And then I bought like a little like one by one window that I did an elk on, and everyone really like loved it. And I just I haven't stopped doing it. It's it's been kind of zero to 60 for me. My biggest event, this is the most paintings I've had. I have 14 here today. It's Common Sense and Rustic Scrubs, handmade candles and soaps by me. Um, I started this company out of my house about 11 years ago, starting with the candles. My grandmother had um, cancer and she passed away in the house and I needed something to kind of preoccupy my time while I was helping with her. So I started doing the candles and then it progressively went into the soaps. And then I started doing all the primitives and I work with a lot of reclaimed pieces of wood and stuff. I try and take them and make something else out of it. A fancy bakery. I'm from Israel. I do for 43 years. My own business for 25 years. Everything from scratch. I do a fancy design of wedding cakes, pastries, everything you want I can do for you. I like over here. I like the people. I like outside. I go many shows all over. But rather than just being entertaining and fun, the Keystone Elk Country Alliance, along with the Pennsylvania Game Commission, wanted to teach and inform the public about the wild. They had nature presentations and brought in a bear to show and teach kids and their parents the importance of tagging and trapping wildlife and the correct and safe way to do it. Wagon rides also ran in the evenings to take people out into the woods so they could see herds of elk. The 2018 Elk Expo is set to take place August 18th and 19th. When we come back, we show you a workout class that uses a ballet bar to help you with your cardio. Welcome back. It's toning, cardio, and dance, and it's called Cardio Bar. We went to check out this workout class that doesn't put any stress on your joints. You're never jumping. There's no uh, hard impact 
on your joints or on your body, you do it in your bare feet so that you can feel the floor and you can feel the intrinsic muscles in your feet. It helps with balance. It's, there's a lot of core work involved because a lot of times we're doing exercises on one leg. It's really beneficial for people that can't do impact. Um, I had a woman just now with her feet, her, the bottom of her feet are shot. My knees, I can't do any more running. So this was sort of a beautiful segue so that I could still get nice and sweaty and get a fabulous workout and torch calories and really build muscle without hurting my body and my joints. McLaughlin has been an instructor for about a year. When she first took the class, she was expecting a relaxed workout. What she got was something incredibly different. And so it combines cardio conditioning, weights, strength training, and lots of lower body work. It's ballet inspired, but you don't need to be a dancer or you don't need to know ballet. I certainly was never a dancer and never knew ballet. And I took a class, I fell in love with it because it's so much lower body work and it really focuses on lengthening and leaning out the muscles. While at the same time, you are sweating like crazy the whole time. repetitive movements that at first feel like an easy task, but as time goes on, you start to feel the burn and tone in all the right places. The class uses lighter weights to focus on lengthening and strengthening the muscles. I love that it just blends everything and I love for that very small movement. It seems, you know, we're just lifting and lowering an arm or lifting and lowering a leg. And just for small movements, but the repetition, it just, it gets you sweaty. You still get a great workout. So it may seem when someone would say to me before I knew what this was, cardio bar, I thought, oh, you're just at a bar. You have the bar to hold on to. It can't be much of a workout. And then I did it and I just, I burned a lot of calories. I was tired. I felt my muscles burning. You really feel a deep intrinsic burn. McLaughlin comes up with the class routine herself and each class is different. She's constantly changing moves and music to give you the best workout. And she keeps everyone in class in mind, also coming up with modifications for each move. She says, never be afraid to ask the instructor questions. I'd say take it at your own pace. And I tell anybody this that comes to my class, always take it at your own pace. Listen to your body. If there's something you can't do, ask the instructor for a modification. I try hard to give modifications, but if I don't, I always say, please ask me for a modification. I'm more than happy to give it to you. I don't want anyone to hurt themselves. Classes in strength training, yoga for balance, or any other dance workout class would help you build and tone along with cardio bar. Jump in and try new and different routines. McLaughlin says not to let the name of the classes scare you away. I just say don't be afraid of something that's called cardio bar. Don't be afraid that it's dance inspired. I cannot do Zumba. I cannot teach Zumba. I don't have any rhythm or coordination but I can do cardio bar. So don't get scared by the name, as I would say with any class, if it's a you know, um, strength training, uh, muscle building class, don't get scared of that. The instructor's gonna show you what to do and have modifications. So just come ask the instructor, ask questions. Right now, Cardio Bar is available every Tuesdays at 4.30 p.m. and will be added to the schedule every Thursday mornings at 8.30. When we come back, Mel shows us a tailgate-ready recipe to get us in the mood for Penn State football. Welcome back to the center of it all. Summer is on its way out, but fall is right around the corner. Mel gets us prepared with a set of ribs. Every year, like clockwork, here in Happy Valley, us longtime locals prepare for one thing, tailgate. Even if you're not a fan of football, it's hard not to get caught up in the excitement. It might be fall, but around this town, everybody's got spring in their step. Join me right here at the stovetop and at my oven today while I show you how to make my house special honey mustard barbecue sauce along with my method for broiling and baking spare ribs for tailgate. Let me start by saying 
that everything that goes into a dry rub or a wet mop for doing ribs on the barbecue grill goes into my honey mustard barbecue sauce. I do this because ribs that are cooked in the oven do not cook properly if they get sauced, well, dry rubbed or wet mopped prior to going in the oven. My method says make the sauce first and sauce the ribs last. I'm going to start with a cup and a half of mustard, yellow ballpark. Let's get it all in there. Got a cup of honey. Honey mustard. I've got a mixture here of molasses, chipotle hot sauce. Oh, that smells fantastic. And apple cider vinegar is in this too. A quarter cup of brown sugar. And a lot of spices. Chili powder, garlic powder, smoked pap paprika, turmeric for a pretty color and chili powder and chipotle pepper. I'm going to bring this over medium high. I'm going to whisk it constantly. I'm going to bring this to a simmer and I'm going to let it simmer for about five minutes and that's it. Oh my goodness, I love this barbecue sauce. It's my favorite recipe. That's been about four and a half minutes. It's all smooth and aromatic. And I'm just going to turn the heat off on this, put a lid on it, and set this aside while we season our ribs. Every grill master, including my husband, son, cousin, and next door neighbor, has their own method for cooking the perfect rack of ribs out on the barbecue grill. My method breaks every rule in their big beautiful barbecue book in the sky. What I'm going to start by doing is just seasoning all of these ribs generously with coarse ground sea salt. Coarse, coarse salt is best, sea or kosher. I'm, going, I'm starting on the underside of the ribs. And then I'm going to season the top again with coarse ground peppercorn blend. This is a blend of five different types of peppercorns. I'm just going to pop these under the broiler for 18 to 20 minutes. Then I'm going to flip them over and do the same thing on the second side. been 18 minutes on the first side. They're all golden brown and sizzling. I'm going to find a place to stick a fork in between the ribs and flip them over on their second side. I'm going to liberally season them again. Lots of sea salt or kosher salt and lots more of that pepper corn blend. Lots and lots and lots and lots. And I'm going to put these back under the broiler for another 18 to 20 minutes. I've taken my ribs out of the broiler and I flipped them over quickly and painted them on the bottom side with a light coating of my barbecue sauce. And now I'm painting them on the top side with a light coating of my barbecue sauce. We don't want to put too much on these. Just a nice light painting of sauce on the outside. Oh, they look gorgeous. Don't they look gorgeous? 
And now I'm going to uh, cover this pan with aluminum foil and pop these in a 350 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. For fair weather tailgaters and cooks who entertain stadium goers in their kitchens before and after Nittany Lion games, I hope you'll put this recipe in your back pocket and give it a try this season. After all, we're all Penn State cooks. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. Now I can say everybody here at the station enjoyed all of Mel's leftovers because they were completely gone that same afternoon. When we come back, we introduce you to a friendly beagle named Skip. He's snuggly, loving, and looking for a new place to call home. Thanks, Alicia. I'm here with Skip from the Nittany Beagle Rescue. He's a two-year-old male. He's been neutered and he's um, a really friendly pup. He's up to date on all his shots and everything. He's great with people and uh, with kids and with other dogs and he's good in the car. I think he might need a little bit of work on house training. You know, he might have an accident here and there, but he's responsive to attention and treats, so he'd be pretty easy to, uh, to train. He's already pretty obedient as far as when you call him and trying to get his attention, so he's a good dog. He does like to jump, um, just to say hi, to be closer to you, so uh, little kids he might knock over if they're not used to it, but he's not doing it maliciously. He just wants to say hi and give a kiss. And he likes grass, so he needs his greens, but we've had him a couple weeks now. He's at the kennel. He's in need of a foster or a, an adoption. And yeah, he's a good dog. He really likes attention. That wraps up this week's Center of It All. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week, and I'll see you next time.